Hello friends, this is Rahul Logan here as a Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting LLP and today we would be covering a topic of the hedging of the INR liability using OIS. OIS stands for Overnight Index Swap. This is a very tactical video and this data which you are looking at either your left hand or the right hand side, this is the latest data which we have taken from the Bloomberg. So this is as on today which is 5th of May 2017, the latest data which we have taken. This is the latest o OIS curve. But before moving this further, further, let me explain you what OIS stands at. It's a very unfortunate fact that, especially in India, there are many corporate treasurers who tend to believe that if I invested in a FD at the rate of 8% and market has moved to 8.5%, then this is my fit. I cannot do anything. On the contrary, if I, if, if I made a, a low liability at 9% and the market has moved to 6%, and in the absence of any embedded derivative, I will I will switch from a high debt liability to a low debt liability. But they don't because they don't understand that there is an instrument which is widely available in India, and people like Reliance Industries Limited are doing it on an often basis. And there are many companies across the globe. This overnight index swap is the most liquid market in this world. So if you ask me from a foreign exchange point of view, what are the two liquid market we do have? Then my answer would be OIS. Overnight index swap and IRS, which is interest rate swaps. They two are the most liquid market we have we have across the globe. But in India, as you know that things are always complicated in nature. OIS is too complicated in nature. So there are two legs of OIS. One leg of OIS is the MIBO, which is Mumbai Interbank Offer Rate, which is an interbank offer rate which is published at 10 a.m. IST. And there are respective contributors, which has been decided by the Thomson Reuters as well as the Reserve Bank of India. They contributes and uh, based upon their contribution, a rate which is getting published at 10 a.m. IST. That rate can either be received or paid. It depends upon your view that uh, if you are thinking that interest rate to rise, if you are thinking that interest rate to fall. So if you are thinking that interest rate to rise, then what Reliance would be doing, Reliance would be receiving the MIBOR because uh, it is a daily rate. So believe me that it is a daily rate. And uh, so what, what exactly MIBOR is that? For a minute assume that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is a working day. So three day MIBOR will get, get computed. Wednesday is a off. So Wednesday rate would be the Tuesday rate. Thursday, Friday would again a working day. So the rate will get calculated by Thomson Reuters. This is also known as one of fixings. Saturday, Sunday is off, so the rate is for rate rate is of Friday. So at the end of the year, the geometric average, geometric average of this rate, which is my bar, would be compared with the geometric average of the OIS. OIS is overnight index swap. That is a fixed rate. That is something which, which we need to appreciate. That is a fixed rate. So what exactly would be happen that there are two legs to it. So if Reliance Industries Limited Treasury function thinking that interest rate to rise, which is also my personal opinion that, uh, that RBI to increase the interest rate in the near future, then what I would be doing, I would be, uh, I would be receiving the MIBOR because on a daily basis the interest rate, the floating, it's a floating rate. So daily basis the interest would be high, the geometric average of OIS would be greater. So I would be receiving MIBOR and pay OIS, but, but I need to pay this. But let us take a small break here. If Reliance thinks that interest rate is decreasing, then they would do the reverse. They would be paying my board and they would be receiving OIS. All those, those who are watching the video must having a question in their mind, the what would if the interest rate falls, what would if your prediction failed, then you can bind it up. That is a beautiful part of it. Like in case of a forward contract, if you have taken a forward contract at today, which is 64.30 roughly, and one year premium is roughly 3.38 rupees so approximately 67.40 which is an outright for one year which you are getting and assuming that uh, to, uh, after three months something or other would happen and INR went to 68 on a spot basis and one year premium went to four and a half so one year outright would be at 72 in that sense you can wind it up the near term the near term forwards you can wind it up and you can take certain losses in your books or what you can do if you are a very intelligent treasurer, you can convert forward into options and options into forward. That anyways you can do. In case you have any clarification in that in that regards, you can come to you can come to me in that how to convert forward into option and how to convert option into forward. So there are two ways reliance can do. They can either receive MIBOR and pay OIS. This is what if they think that interest rate would rise. They can pay MIBOR and receive or and uh, here they receive MIBOR and pay OIS if interest rate would rise. Here they would pay MIBOR and receive OIS if they think interest rate would fall. 
but that they only do it is a synthetic structure because it is just like you are having this line and without touching this line you wanted to create another line which is greater and if it is smaller you can do that so it meant that you have an IR liability existing in your books which is 30,000 crores and tenure is 10 years the total interest which is paying 8.5% and the payment is for one year there are people in the market without naming the companies those who are dealing in the OIS especially outside India like I told you that OIS and the IRS are the most liquid markets we have across the globe so in case of uh, OIS you have dollar OIS, GBP OIS, Australian dollar OIS, Canadian dollar OIS, Japanese yen OIS you just name it and you will get it you just name it it is the most deepest in fact you would be strange to know that uh, OIS in India is for 10 years on the contrary in the US this is for 50 years 50 years even after 50 years there is a court which is available in Singapore in Sing dollar OIS can easily be traded till 30 years Japanese yen and Euro and GBP OIS can be traded for 50 odd years and so is the IRS so American dollar IRS and American dollar OIS can be traded for 50 years each now the question here is should Reliance go with this so what would be the net benefit Reliance would be getting net benefit would be minus 8.5 percent minus I am writing because they are paying some interest and plus minus the benefit of the OIS which they are getting which is net OIS and net OIS would be equals to which is you are which is my bar plus minus uh, the overnight index which is the fixing but if you look at the current rate which we with the, the current rates which we have here if you look at that there one month till 10 years rates are here so one month three months six months twelve months two year three year four year five year like that we have that you can see that one month is 6.22 and 10 year is 6.78 you can also see that one year, uh, one month is 6.28 and 10 year is 6.8, which effectively meant, which effectively meant that that the that at least the OIS curve is not inward. Inward means it is it is not falling. It is an upward curve. OIS curve as of now is an upward curve, and that is something which we sincerely need to understand and sincerely need to appreciate. OIS curve is an upward curve. Since OIS curve is an upward curve and it is going to be more upward because of the following reasons number one there is a big big probability that federal reserve is going to rise the rate by 100 basis point and that is going to happen because if you look at the nfl which is non firm payroll which is which came yesterday you got to know that there is a substantial increase of 98000 right if you look at the the if you look at the rba perspective they are going to hike the interest rate because if the federal reserve would hike the rate they have to hike the interest rate the reason here is else India will move towards reverse carry. So if American people will get 2% in US, why somebody would come here for a 7.5% and that too you would have withholding taxes and a lot of tax issues in this country. Another thing that which is the reverse carry because of the because of the tax cuts. Now Trump as administration wanted to uh, phase out APT and uh, AMT and uh, alternative minimum tax and uh, then and again they wanted to cut the corporate tax to 15 percent Singapore is offering corporate tax of 17 percent this country is offering corporate tax of 33 percent and American government wanted to hide the rate by 50 basis point more so from 1 percent to 50 basis point which is one and a half percent and further they were going to cut the tax rate to 15 percent which means two percent lesser than the Singapore which means that if American government will cut the rate then uh, then immediately in response to the competitiveness Singapore government also have to cut cut the tax by by 2% to at least to match American government because you know that both America both New York and Singapore are acting as a global financial center so it's a win-win situation right now the point is considering all this thing I at least I don't see that there is any reason why a curve should go inward I see that there is a big reason that curve should go up in a near future. I don't think that in the upcoming policy Reserve Bank of India is going to cut the rate. Neither I think that Federal Reserve is not going to rise the rate. Federal Reserve in June is going to rise the rate by at least 50 basis point, uh, at least by 25 basis point. With this they will touch to 1 and 1.25 percent and hopefully in September they would be doing one and half, uh, another 25 basis point high 
which is 1.5 percent so together they would be one point at the end of this year in December policy I'm not expecting much because it's a Christmas season not, not much action which is happening in the market markets are very fragile very less liquidity is there or a simple thing could uh, create any, any any kind of stuff so I think that by December in December meeting I don't think Fed will do anything but they would go high by twice which is 25 basis point each in June and September and I personally don't think that that has been already factored in. I don't think that that has already factored in. It has not yet factored in. There are people who are expecting many things, which which uh, somehow is not happening. So in my personal opinion, this curve would go up. And if you are a corporate treasurer who having an INR liability in the books at a high cost, and you wanted to wind it up, don't bind it up. You can you can create a synthetic structure in your books, which is why which is overnight index swap. And this is a beautiful structure. Believe me, this structure will help you. And and and, and, and if your projection go wrong, you, you can wind it up. And the winding cost from overnight index swap is not pretty big. That's something which you couldn't afford. This is about this video. Wherein we had a word about that what overnight index swap is all about. And what is the these are all the current trades of overnight index swap and how these swaps play an important role for all the companies, those who have the corporate liability. The same can be done if you have an asset also. So if you have an INR asset in the books, you know, uh, and you wanted to, to think that they are not making good return, then what you can do, you can, without winding it up, without winding, winding it up, you can go, you can go to the OIS. Because you know that there are two rates, which is bid and ask, which is coming here. So bid means that corporate asset and bank liability. It means that INR asset. And uh, ask means INR liabilities, so corporate liability and bank asset. In nutshell, OIS is a very wonderful market. It is up to a corporate treasurer how he is taking it. In my personal opinion, all, all corporate treasurers should go with the OIS. If you have any question, you can visit our website www.registryconsulting.in. My mobile is 9899242978. My email ID is, my Skype ID is Rahul5327. And my email is rahul.magan at the rate Thank you and have a wonderful time.